Hello and welcome to Live Doctors. My name is Charles Simonoff. I'm a family physician in Manchester, England, and we're very lucky and privileged today to have Dr. Douglas Grossman speaking to us on functional gastrointestinal disorder. Dr. Drossman graduated from the Albert Einstein Medical School in New York and has since worked in gastroenterology and psychiatry in both New York and in North Carolina. He's a world expert on the treatment of gastrointestinal disease involved in the bio, socio, psycho aspects of the disease and I'm delighted to be able to speak to you today. Oh, thanks for having me. Could you start off by giving us a definition of functional gastrointestinal disorder? Well, that, that's actually a, a somewhat complicated question. If you ask most people what a functional GI disorder is, uh, including physicians, they'll often say the absence of organic disease, meaning you don't see ulcers, you don't see inflammation, you don't see anything. Yeah. That evolved to be more of a disorder of motility. It was thought that this has to do with spasm of the gut. But nowadays, we're in a whole different era. We're looking at it as disorders of gut-brain interaction. And what we mean by that is that there is a, a connection, a hard wiring between the brain and the gut. Yeah. And as a result of that, abnormalities in the regulation of that may lead to symptoms like pain or altered bowel habit. Uh, leading to what we call functional G GI disorder. So we're trying to change the name from functional, which can sometimes be stigmatizing, yeah. because when you don't see anything on x-ray or endoscopy, patients think, well, maybe I'm crazy. Yeah. And we're trying to change that stigma. So we're now saying disorders of gut-brain interaction. Right. I think that's a useful distinction. When I was a medical student, if anybody suffered from any gastrointestinal problem, there was a whole battery of tests you did in order to rule out any physical disorder. Um, I think, as you say, we've moved on from there because more often than not, the results will be negative. So you then have to work on what is actually going on between the brain and the gut, presumably. That's right. And actually, I'm part of an organization called the Rome Foundation, yeah. which is involved with developing criteria for these functional GI disorders because um, the absence of disease does not define anything. We're really looking at how we're using positive criteria to define these syndromes. Mm -hmm.